Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we've got one of our physical games episodes for you. This is the series where I show you some of the games I have picked up physically for the Switch in the last few months. We'll have a look at whether there's any mandatory updates needed onto your system storage, have a look at the box art, see if anything comes inside with it, and then I'll give you a mini review of sorts based on my initial impressions of the game. I've tried to pick a selection of games from different genres, price points and regions, plus we have a few games at the start of the video that were sent to us to show you too, again to show you what's out there, some of these you might not have even realised had a physical release. So which games have I bought, how much have I paid for them and were they worth it? Well, let's find out. Let's have a look at a few bits that were sent to us first then and starting with this collector's edition of a game called Tandem A Tale of Shadows. This was provided to us by Funstock so thank you very much, much appreciated. And before we look at the game itself, let's first have a look at what this magical box edition contains. So you get a statue of the game's protagonist, Emma, who as you can see has quite an Alice in Wonderland look to her. Then you get the game itself of course, and an art book showing character designs, level layouts and a few other drawings which lend themselves to the Victorian England setting of the game. As for the game then, it's a very charming puzzle platformer where you play as Emma and a teddy bear called Fenton investigating a case of a missing person. Emma moves from a top down perspective, whereas Fenton moves on a side scrolling plane. You must switch between the two characters in order to solve puzzles and get to the exit of each stage. Emma is also able to cast shadows using her lantern, which then become hard ground for Fenton to walk on and reach otherwise inaccessible areas. It's a clever concept and I've enjoyed my time with it so far. If you are interested, there is a standard retail release or this magical box edition can be ordered directly through Fun Stocks. I will put a link to their store in the top pinned comment of the video. We were also sent a few items from Forever Entertainment. Now they have recently started their own small print run label called Forever Limited and have published some of their Switch games in standard and collector's editions. As you may be able to see here, they have Rise Eterna, Green Hell, Sparkle, Thief Simulator and Panzer Dragoon. Plus they have copies of their House of the Dead remake up for pre-order. Again, I'll put a link to their website in the top pin comment. I'll open one of the boxes up to give you an idea of what you get with these collector's editions. Here you have the Green Hell one. So in here you've got a Green Hell emblazoned Swiss Army Knife type appliance. You get a few different enamel pins, three in total in this box. There is a cleaning cloth and then the game itself, which comes with a reversible cover, a sticker and a numbered certificate of authenticity. Items range from game to game, the Sparkle Box for example has a heat changing mug and the Rise Eterna one has a cardboard battle diorama, so do check out their website if you want the full details. On to the games I've picked up then and the first one is one I've wanted to play for quite a long time. This is Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse, which first released for the original Xbox back in 2005 or 2006 depending on your region and as I never owned the system I never got to play it first time round. This is a third person action adventure game where you play as the titular Stubbs, a zombie who is looking for his lost love after he was murdered some years earlier. It's all told in a very humorous way and takes place in an alternate 1950s America where technology has advanced past what was available at that time. You can attack and eat the brains of humans, turning them into zombies that you can then rally to your calls, sending them in to kill further humans. There are some crazy moments such as a dance off competition with licensed music from the time period and although it hasn't aged brilliantly, there are some clunky moments and a few of the checkpoints are a bit uneven. On the whole, I've been having quite a bit of fun with it. A physical copy of the Xbox original game is very expensive these days, so it's great that there is now another version available. In my head! Trying to make me look bad? I won't forget this! Master, I'm a friend! I think this one's possessed! The next one was one of the first party games I needed but wasn't willing to pay full price for, and that is New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. 
I got it after it randomly dropped to £28.99 on Amazon one day before promptly going back up in price and for a first party game I was quite happy to pay that. So this released on the Wii U first as the title would imply and it is a fairly standard entry in the new Super Mario Bros series. The platforming and level design is of a high standard but it is just a bit safe and it follows the well trodden formula of these new Super Mario games ever since the first one on the DS. That of course was the first 2D game in a while and was met with a very positive response but things have just become a bit samey since. I knew all of this when buying it to be fair, I mean I own the version for the Wii U as well as the Luigi themed expansion, both of which are available on this Switch version though which is nice. And to be fair there are glimpses of that old Nintendo magic. One level that always stood out to me is called Painted Swampland which thematically is based on Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. It's a shame that this level of originality isn't used just a little bit more. Still, if you want more Mario, it will do exactly what you expect and it will do it very well, especially in local multiplayer. <laughs> Having just put new Super Mario Brothers in the Amazon basket, I noticed Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games as one of their recommended picks for just £20. So yes, I fell into Amazon's impulse buy trap for sure, but for £20 I couldn't really complain. This then is the latest in what is now a long line of Mario and Sonic Olympic based collaborations. I think the series began back on the Wii and this one is based on the 2020 Tokyo Olympics which eventually took place of course in 2021. It has a lovely presentation, really nice and vibrant and I like the selection of games here but this is the very epitome of why I wait until certain first party Nintendo games or games published by Nintendo randomly drop in price. For my personal tastes, I actually preferred the officially licensed Tokyo 2020 game that came to the Switch as I feel that some of the games just played a little better and that can be got for a very cheap price now. I actually imported it when it looked as if the Western version would be cancelled along with the games itself but thankfully that didn't end up being the case. I did like the 1964 Olympic Games which were included here which are basically a few of the events but with characters portrayed in a pixel art form and I would have liked a bit more of this to be honest. I'd recommend keeping an eye out for this one to drop in price but there's definitely fun to be had here and the multiplayer is a good time too. I also picked up Neo Cab which is a game heavy on story as you play the part of a cab driver who has just moved to a new city. It's set in a near future with a cyberpunk feel and you must interact with your passengers answering their questions in a satisfactory way and asking questions that generate good conversation. This will see you keep your star rating high and make sure you gain enough money to pay for petrol, a place to stay and the rent of your car. There is an overarching story related to the reason that you visited this new town and each passenger fleshes out the story further but basically it's a story about remaining human in a world that is constantly becoming further and further automated. I'm really liking this one so far, it was the game that I had been playing for a while each night until a couple of big reviews on the bounce sidetracked me from it. If you like games such as Valhalla then this is of a similar ilk and although perhaps not quite as memorable as that game it is still definitely worth a play. This next one is a fantastic run and gun set in a gritty cyberpunk world. The pixel art is top notch and the setting reminds me of the grimy streets in the classic movie from the 1970s The Warriors but with a more futuristic spin, similar to Blade Runner or Escape from New York in that respect. You play as a bounty hunter needing to take on gangs on their own turf before hunting the gang leader and eliminating them in an epic boss fight. To get this for around £16 as I did was an absolute bargain and if you like your old school run and guns or have any sort of affinity for the movies I've just mentioned then this one is definitely worth tracking down. 
You get a few bits with the physical version, including a few badges as you can see here, as well as an instruction manual which shows off some of the game's mechanics and the artwork. Next is a game that I've reviewed in the past and that is Carrion. Now initially, as is the case with a lot of Devolver Digital's Nintendo Switch releases, this only saw a physical release through Special Reserve games, and I think possibly Limited Run games also did a release with a different cover variant. For those of you though that do not like small print run releases, thankfully this has now ended up with a standard release too. It's a horror themed action adventure game with some light metroidvania elements but the main difference is that you play as the creature trying to escape from a medical research facility. I really enjoyed this game when I reviewed it and I'll put links to any reviews of the games in this video in the top pinned comment if you want the full details and this physical release also comes with a small art book showing some of the game's pixel art. It's quite basic with no explanatory writing or context given, but it's always nice to get something in the game boxes. As we all know, it's a practice that is becoming more and more rare. We have an import this time, this is a Japanese game coming via Play Asia, and this is Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater. This is known as Project Zero over here in Europe, possibly in Australia too, and it's nice to have the alternative title on this import version. This is a horror game that never got a Western physical release, although I did review the digital version. It's played in the third person and sees you using the camera obscura to dispel ghosts and spirits. The most important thing to know about this import is that it doesn't include an English language option on the cartridge itself, although an English patch has since been released, so you can download this, but it is of course an additional download, so just know that this is what you are in for. This game originally released on the Wii U and received a limited physical run. I think it may have even been exclusive to Europe actually, and I was lucky enough to grab a copy of that one too. It's a series I love, so hopefully we'll see a new entry in the series soon. And if you are interested in picking up this physical version, we do have a link to Play Asia. It will be in the top pinned comment, and you can get 5% off of your order by using that link, along with our code, which is also down in that pinned comment. Next is Oninaki, which is the third game produced by the Square Enix subsidiary company, Tokyo RPG Factory. The other two, of course, are I Am Setsuna and Lost Sphere, both of which are also on the Switch. I Am Setsuna only received a physical release in Asia, whereas Lost Sphere and this game had more mainstream releases, and as you may be able to see, I got this for a bit of a bargain actually, of just £14.99. This is an ARPG as opposed to the previous two games which were turn-based, and it tells a story with quite a morose theme. You play as a Watcher, a person whose job it is to defend the cycle of reincarnation and ensure that spirits are able to pass into the next life. You do this by battling monsters which have formed from the regrets of the living, and the usual tropes of the genre apply with your character leveling up as you battle. There are also the daemons, and these spirits can be acquired by the hero and provide different weapon types. You can then build your affinity with these, which will in turn increase attack or defense stats. It's fairly traditional in terms of most of the mechanics, playing like a dungeon crawling ARPG, but the story, which definitely takes some dark turns at times, makes it worth playing, especially if you can find it for a good price, as I did. And the final game then was a pickup from CEX, and it is called Undernight Inbirth Exolate Clear. I think that's how you say it, apologies if not. And it's a 2D fighting game which first released in arcades back in 2012, although it has had a few updated editions released over the years. 
Gameplay wise and aesthetically for that matter, it is quite similar to games in the Blaze Blue or Guilty Gear series. As well as your basic attacks, you have a special meter which fills up whenever you attack or get hit and there is something called the GRD meter which I haven't quite got my head around yet but as far as I know it relates to the player with the most GRD at the end of a cycle gaining a Vorpal buff. Despite not having a true understanding of some of the mechanics, I have really enjoyed this game so far and it joins a very strong roster of classic fighting games on the Switch. I got this for just £12 which is a bit of a steal despite CEX's best attempts to ruin the box with their stickers which they seem to weld on these days. Definitely worth picking up if you are a fan of fighting games and it does require a small update of just 182 megabytes. <laughs> So there you have it, another bunch of physical games that I have picked up over the last couple of months. I think I've got some good games there and I think I've got them for some decent prices. Let me know of anything that you have picked up in this time as I always say that's my favourite part of the video, seeing what other people get and let me know if you've enjoyed them. Thank you to the companies that provided a few extra bits, again it helps you see what else is out there and the links to their stores are in the top in comment if you want to have a look at those items in a bit more detail. Now I haven't been very well this week, as you may have noticed last week Mark did a lot of the audio for our videos, I completely lost my voice, so hopefully it's okay for this video and it's been bearable to listen to, apologies if not. For the next episode of this particular series, I had the idea of doing a similar sort of thing, 10 or so games that I've bought, tell you a bit about it, but maybe to some sort of budgetary limit. My thinking was to have a £100 limit and see if I could pick up 10 physical games for that price and see exactly what I could get and how good they were for that money. Let me know what you think about that idea. Don't forget there's that Play Asia link down there if you do want to import anything. If you do use it, please do let us know what it is you have bought with it. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.